Praise be to God. Giving God thanks uh, that we're alive today and he's given us the strength uh, to be able, firstly, to talk to him, to pray to him. For without him, we can do absolutely nothing. You're watching this only because God has given you life to be able to. So we thank him for all the things that he has given us. So today's show is about Rabbi Tobias Singer's two messiahs, okay, which I believe is not correct. There is only one Mashiach, but we will be looking at the scripture and see why it is that they believe in two messiahs and not in only one. So um, we're looking at the weekly Pasha, which ever which is Genesis 37 to Genesis 40. Now remember, as I said before, when you're studying the Torah, it's not just what is plainly written down, it is things that, what things are alluding to. What is the scripture appointed to? Different levels of study of the Torah, which you see in Ezekiel, when he goes in the water to ankle deep, then up to his waist, then up to his chest, and over his head. And so too is the study of Torah. We're going to wade in the waters and we're going to go till the waters come up to our head. That is the way that the study of the Torah shall be in the Messianic era, which is now. So there we see it begins with in Genesis 37. Joseph has two, now remember that? Two dreams, okay? And one where all the sheaves are bowing down to him, which is his brothers, and the second dream, which is the, even the sun and the moon uh, bow down to him, which represents his mother and father, both really part of the one same event that will happen. But of course, God wanted to split it up into two. Why? Because the Mashiach, uh, um, Era will be split up into two. Where do we see that? If you turn in your Bible to Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, it says this, that the Mashiach, watch this, will, W-I-L-L, come riding on a donkey. Not maybe. And then if you turn in Daniel, um, you will see chapter 7, that the Mashiach um, comes in the clouds of heaven. Not Maybe. Daniel says in chapter 12 that all the things in this book will happen. So there we have the two coming up uh, again. Like Joseph's two dreams that the Mashiach is split up into two events, but it's the one Messiah, not two. And that's where the Rabbi Thomas Singer has been pushed by the wind to believe that there must be to Mashiachs. No, it's the same one Mashiach split up into two events. So, so the Messiah will come on a donkey and then he will come in the heavens. And that was Joseph's dream. He sees the sheaves, which was the earth. Then he sees the sun and the moon. That's the clouds of the heaven. Both part of the same one message that Joseph was um, alluding to, which of course, if you turn inside of your Bible, you see in Malachi chapter three, you have it begins with the Mashiach coming to his temple, okay? But then in the end, then Elijah comes before the great and awesome day of the Mashiach. So you see again now, the one Mashiach, even in Malachi, split up into Two different events. And Isaiah chapter 11, you find verses 10 and 11 that the Gentiles trust inside of the Mashiach. Then he returns a second time to the Israelites, Judah. Okay, which again repeats itself in Isaiah 49 verse 5. I repeat. So there we see as we journey through the Torah Joseph's one, two dreams really refer to the same thing, uh, only split up into like like a show. You have the first act, 
and the second act. Like in a football match, you have the first half and the second half, but it's part of the same thing. Not two different messiahs. And as we journey through the Torah, we will see. Praise God. So there we see um, why um, the rabbis have got confused uh, concerning the two and the one. So God um, goes on to help us with this. God says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And each one had, look, two sons. Abraham had Ishmael and Isaac. Okay? And of course, when God came to test Abraham, he said to him, Take thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest. Again, showing us that there really isn't two. There really is just one Mashiach. But it's so easy to, as you go through the Torah, to be moved by the wind of lack of wisdom and to begin to think there's two Mashiachs when there's only one. Then we go on to Isaac. Isaac, Rebecca, had twins inside of a womb and gave birth to twins, but only one of them truly received the blessing. When Esau came in and cried, please bless me, Isaac said, I cannot because Jacob has taken the only true blessing. There really is only one Mashiach, one who was anointed, not Mashiach ben Joseph and Mashiach ben David. They are the same person doing two different things, which we will see as we go. Then you go on to Jacob. He has 12 sons, but really there was only one who had the coat of many colors. That's the Mashiach, okay? So, um, which God knew that the Jewish people would end up thinking maybe there's two Messiahs and maybe people can think there's three or four. Some Jewish people thinks that the Rebbe Schneerson was a Messiah, but only one wears that multicolored coat and it's Mashiach Ben David who will suffer like Joseph did. That's why he has the term Mashiach ben Joseph. So there you see all these patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, having the two, but God only truly recognizes the one. So this is the foundation that God lays down that we will not be moved away from the one Mashiach onto as the rabbi and the rabbi. Thomas Singer says, two Mashiachs. And of course, these things are very important to understand as we go on to chapters um, 38 and 39, we see again the number two coming up when Judah has two sons er and on that God kills. So again, God's showing us, he wants us to put to death the theology of being two Mashiachs and understand there is only one. And in these chapters 38 and 39 of Genesis, you see Judah gets himself in a mess and sleeps with what he thought was a prostitute. And he gives the prostitute his staff, watch this, and his signet ring, okay? Okay, to the prostitute uh, in I um, promise that he will pay a goat later when he collects the staff and the signet ring. And of course, when he goes to look, they can't find the prostitute. And Judah tells his friend, don't look anymore because we will become the laughing stock. Well, you would be because everyone's going to know that you've been sleeping with a prostitute. What is God really alluding to there? There we see the death of the two, which God wants to remember, the Mashiach comes from Judah. So God wants us to understand that the Mashiach who comes from the line of Judah is not two, but only one. So God kills two sons of Judah. And therefore Judah, which left the staff and the signet ring of the prostitute, 
When you begin to say that the Mashiach is two messiahs, you become a laughing stock. Why? Because the staff and the signet ring both belong to the same person, which was Judah. But what Rabbi Tovia Singer is saying is that the Mashiach is split up into two. One Mashiach defeats all the evil, and the other Mashiach receives all the glory. That doesn't make any sense. Someone does all the fighting, someone destroys the evil, but the other Mashiach and gets all the honor and sits upon the throne. No, that becomes a laughing stock. The staff and the signet ring both belong to the same one person. And that's what God again is alluding to in Genesis 38 and 39. Please don't go because another exciting revelation is coming in one second. And of course, you have when Joseph was before Pharaoh, Pharaoh has ready two dreams. And from his two dreams, Joseph says, Genesis 41, verse 25, Joseph says, these dreams you have is one single dream. Again, God making us understand, okay, that the things concerning the Mashiach, for remember, we're dealing with Joseph. And part of the Mashiach's name is Ben Joseph. So everything about the Mashiach is not two, but it has one single meaning. And then we see in chapter 40 of Genesis, Joseph, watch, is in prison and two men are brought before him. That both two dreams inside, watch, the one night. Again, God pointing to us that Ben Joseph Ben Ephraim is only one, okay? And Joseph interprets the, the, the cupbearer's um, dream and he is released and he interprets the baker who, the bread, the baking of bread, who is to die. So there you see in front of Joseph is someone who will die. Now remember that. That's what the Jews say. Ben, Mashiach Ben Joseph will die. But remember, inside of Joseph's interpretation also is the release of the cupbearer, which would be Mashiach ben David. Both of them are the same person that Joseph is interpreting. Mashiach ben Joseph, the interpreter of the dream, is the same one Mashiach, the one that will die and the one that shall be set free, which is Resurrection. So you see, in front of Joseph is the bread and the wine. And of course, you know, Jesus at Passover gave the disciples the bread and the wine, saying that, that, that I am he that shall die, that's the baker, and I am he that shall rise again, Mashiach ben Joseph and Mashiach ben David. So there we see in this first section that the foundation has been laid for us to understand why it is that rabbis such as Tobi Singer have been blown by the wind when reading to believe the Mashiachs of two but because of lack of wisdom which only God says and there's no shame in that remember with Pharaoh no one in the kingdom understood this except Ben Joseph and the same with Daniel Daniel, when Nebuchadnezzar wanted his dream, there was no wise man found, not amongst the Jews, neither amongst the Gentiles, who could interpret the dream. So we're dealing with things that if there's no shame of Rabbi Tonga Singer them being mistaken, but today God is revealing to you by his mercy that, that the baker, the bread, and the wine, the resurrection, the one who set free are both one and the same person be for Joseph. So now that foundation is laid, let us move on to the book of Zechariah, where we will see it actually deals with the death of Mashiach ben Joseph. And we will look at the scripture to see, is there signs there to show us that that person dying in Zechariah actually is Mashiach ben David. So please don't go and just wait one second. 
Okay, so now we're looking at Zechariah now to understand the Mashiach ben Joseph. And before you go into chapter 12 um, of Zechariah, we, we, we have to ask why the name Joseph uh, termed to um, the Mashiach here. If you go back into Genesis chapter 30, you see that when Rachel is uh, um, dying, she said, and so Rachel is giving birth to Joseph. She says, God will give me another son, which the rabbis term as being the Mashiach ben Joseph. And also in um, Genesis 49, when Jacob is blessing Joseph, he says it twice, a charming son. And again, a charming son, which the rabbis believe it means again that um, the Mashiach ben Joseph uh, shall come again to the end, and like Rachel said, shall remove the disgrace. She says, this child has removed my disgrace, so that the Mashiach ben Joseph shall remove the disgrace of Israel. Now again, if he's removing the disgrace, why would a Mashiach come after and sit on the throne? Surely the one who removes the disgrace away from Israel is the Mashiach ben David. Okay, so that's why the term Joseph was given to him. Meaning, remember, that Joseph was betrayed by his own brothers, not the Gentiles. And the rabbis, Tommy Singer, says that in Zechariah chapter 12, it's the nations that kill the Mashiach, Mashiach ben Joseph. It's the nations that do the wrong to Mashiach ben Joseph. But remember, the Joseph term was, it was Israel. It was Judah that sold him into slavery for money. It was the cruelty of Simeon and Levi. You find that inside of um, 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 Genesis chapter 49, when Jacob says about Simeon and Levi, you are cruel, okay, you are cruel, and describes Joseph as an ox, and Moses in Deuteronomy 49, um, he uh, states, states that Simeon and Levi hung, strung up, and killed that ox, which of course they wanted to do to Joseph. So that betrayal was by Israel. So the Mashiach ben Joseph should be betrayed by Simeon, Levi, and Judah. So when we look at Zechariah chapter 12, what do we see there? After they see the Mashiach ben Joseph, and they then God shows you that a mourning begins to happen in Israel. Remember, it says, as if one has lost its only son, showing you again that the Mashiach is only one person. And then God begins to describe the order of the morning. The morning begins with Judah. Okay, now Judah is mourning. Remember, it was Judah that sold Joseph's into slavery back in Genesis. So why would Joseph here, Judah, sorry, be mourning? Why? Surely, um, if the nations, they've done the kill, why? The, the Gentiles have killed Mashiach ben Joseph. Why would Judah be the first to mourn? Then it goes on to Simeon and Levi. Why God? Why would God highlight those two and not Reuben, the firstborn? Not Isaac, not all the other tribes. Why does God concentrate on Simeon, Levi, and Judah, the ones that did the instigating to betray Joseph? It is not the Gentiles God is concentrating on here. It's the betrayal of Israel. Okay, so the question I'd ask you, what person other than Joseph in Genesis because remember we're talking about the Mashiach, Ben Joseph. What person who is called the Mashiach 
did Israel betray just like Simeon, Levi, and Judah did Joseph back in Genesis. Okay? And of course, uh, we know that it is Jesus who was betrayed. Like Moses said, like Jacob said, was strung up like an ox. And remember, you must look at the context in Zechariah chapter 12, if you go to Zechariah chapter 11, God tells you that just like Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver, likewise, he says, I, me, Hashem, you shall weigh my value, not 20 pieces like Joseph, but 30 pieces, which again is like Joseph. So Hashem is telling you, I will be weighed as a value as 30 pieces of silver. And of course, in chapter 12, there we see the proof of that amen betrayal that God was telling you in Ze Zechariah chapter 11, as now Israel sees what they've done to Hashem, Mashiach ben Joseph, and the shock of it causes Levi, Simeon, and Judah to mourn. Oh, praise be to God. So, where will we see Mashiach ben David written there? Where well, I'm just going to bend down and pick up my Bible. For this is so exciting. God helps us here to understand that Mashiach ben Joseph here is in fact Mashiach ben David. Hashem, the Son of God, the one whom you sold for 40 pieces of silver. Of course, you know the story of Joseph and Judas when he throws. Remember, Judas is the name meaning Judah. And remember, it was Judah, amen, that suggested the money to sell uh, um, um, Joseph for money. So here we have Judah uh, um, um, going and throwing the 30 pieces of silver into the temple, which of course, Zechariah chapter 11 says that it shall be thrown into the temple, which confused rabbis such as Rashi. They've not come to a conclusion of what that means. But here today, you can see what that means. So here we have this morning taking place. And in Zechariah chapter 12, verse um, 7, it says this. Okay, let me read it to you. The Lord will save the tents of Judah first, so that the glory of the house of David. So here we have that name David coming. And the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall not be greater than Judah. And in that day, the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem and one who is feeble, so even the weakest among Israel, in that day, shall be like David. So there we have, as everyone's mourning about the Mashiach, Ben Joseph, everybody is like David. And it's the only time in the Torah, the Bible, that's ever said, so everybody is walking around like David. And the house of David shall be like God, or Elohim. People say angels, but it is um, angels is Malachim. But nevertheless, in the Jewish Bible, they put a divine being. But in the Christian Bible, they have like God. So why would God say this? As they're mourning over the Mashiach, Ben Joseph, everybody God sees is walking around like David. And even David is like God himself. Uh, why is God highlighting the name David to such extreme unlike anywhere else in the whole of the Bible. Why? He's showing you that this Mashiach ben Joseph is the one and the same Mashiach ben David, which is Hashem himself, the Son of God. The Proverbs 30 verse 4 says, What is the name of the Son of Yahweh? If you know the one in Zechariah 11, you sold for 30 pieces of silver. The one and same Mashiach ben David and Mashiach ben Joseph. What a wonderful um, revelation that God sees. Even David as if he was like God. 
Elohim himself and everybody else walking around like little Davids. Join that together with Mashiach ben Joseph and you will see they're one and the same self person because like Joseph suffered and rescued the world, so Mashiach ben Joseph is the one Mashiach that will reign in the world and save it. Praise God. Okay, so there we have it in Zechariah. The rabbi singers misses out all of these teachings which I've taught you today by God's grace and especially the significance of David everywhere um, pointing to who the Mashiach Ben Joseph is in Zechariah chapter 12. Well, just to finish, we have in Ezekiel chapter 19, verses 1 to 6, God says to Israel, um, they are, Israel is like a lioness that gave birth to two lions, okay? And because of those two lions that devoured men. So Israel, um, instead of being a mother to the nations, has been like a male lion which killed men, ate men. A lion should not be a man-eater. A lion should be eating zebras and hyenas and oxes, etc. But it went and became a man-eater. And that's what Israel is without Joseph. In Malachi 2 verses 4 to 10, God says to Israel, Have we not all the same father? But Israel, instead of knowing that, has become a man-eater. And the nations being aware of that, that Israel has not got the love of the Gentiles and inside of, of them. He says that the nations in Ezekiel 19 verse 1 to 6 come against Israel because they have become man-eaters. What am I saying? You need Mashiach Ben Joseph's love. The ability that Joseph had in Genesis, he could dwell with Egypt. He could remain with Egypt. He could dress like the Egyptians. He could shave like the Egyptians and still be Jewish. Okay? But Israel had lost that love to be able to do that. But Joseph can. You need Mashiach ben Joseph, who is Mashiach ben David, to be able to bridge the gap between the Gentile and the Jew. And without Joseph, without Jesus, okay, and whom the Gentiles will trust, like Exodus 1, it says this, that Israel did well inside of Egypt until Joseph was no longer there. Without Joseph, uh, amen, Pharaoh rises up and persecutes Israel. So today, okay, please understand that the Mashiach ben Joseph and Mashiach ben David is one and the self-same person that came to die. It said this in uh, Isaiah 53 verse 5 and 6, All we like sheep, all we like sheep have gone astray, but the Lord laid upon him the iniquity of us all. And when you have that, you will stop being seen as a man-eater in Ezekiel 19 verse 1 to 6, but a man-lover. So today, please, put Joseph, okay, whom you betrayed, together with Mashiach ben David, if you don't acknowledge like Levi and Simeon and Judah, that you betrayed the Mashiach and continue to see the difference between the Mashiach and Joseph, the Mashiach and David, you will not be seen as man lovers, but man eaters. As Jacob said, you are cruel, Simeon and Levi. But if you acknowledge your betrayal to the Mashiach and Joseph, Jesus, and understand that you strung him up like an ox, and mourn and see the Mashiach ben Joseph and David is one, then you will have peace with all the nations of the world. But you have to acknowledge the two as being one. Praise be to God. What an exciting message. Praise God. See how good God is. God is so merciful.
like Daniel and, and um, uh, Joseph said to Pharaoh and Nebuchadnezzar, only God, amen, can interpret dreams. Only God can give who gives wisdom. So there's no shame in not seeing it, but there is a shame that when you see it, that you reject it. Praise God.